talk is really about the future, and I like thinking about the future and what's in store for us. And we can get clues of the future by looking at what's happening right now or what's happened in the past. So what we humans do is we really are obsessed with figuring out the world and mapping it, measuring it, and mirroring it, neither the pictures we make or the graphics we make. And now with computers, this has changed drastically. So here's a picture of Einstein, and he's a, sort of our guru of figuring out what the universe was all about. But now we're kind of doing that and taking it and make, using the data to sort of recreate the universe in a sort of virtual way. So you look at these two pictures, which one of these two pictures was entirely generated by a computer, the one on the left or the one on the right? So you don't know. It's, we're at the point where there's, we're unsure. So how did we get to this point? And where is this leading? And this is what the talk is really about. So here's a bunch of game controllers. And a really good way to understand this is to look at the history of video games and video graphics. So back in 1965 was the first time anybody started to use the word pixel. And then you know, once we started to utilize the pixel, we made games. So that was kind of, that was tennis in the middle, or table tennis. Then we were fighting space aliens in the space, space invader days. As we got further along in the 80s, we started creating worlds where the characters were in. You could actually tell that that was a human, that was Mario jumping around. That Zelda, the Legend of Zelda, we have a world to explore and look around in. And you can put your mind into these games. In the 90s, this got better and better where the graphics became to the point where uh, we could see a, an actress, that's Laura Croft, in the Tomb Raider game. And I, I remember Mortal Kombat thinking that was just the best graphics ever. Um, and then in the later 90s, early 2000s, we had EverQuest, The Sims, and there's Halo, and Grand Theft Auto, and World of Warcraft, and even Rock Band. Rock Band made you feel like you were in a rock band, right? It was all about utilizing the screen to affect the way you saw reality. Now in the 2000s, we're at the point where you can't tell the difference between a, a movie and a video game. And you've got Oculus Rift, which is our immersion technology, which leads to like the holodecks, like in Star Trek. So where is this all actually leading? Is it going to be the holodeck? Are we going to recreate everything perfectly? So it's almost like a this, but it's not real. There's some clues in the art world. So if we go back to what happened in art, we're going to get some clues. So you know, this is the early, early art. So you have scratching on rocks, painting on caves starting to uh, show humans in a little bit more detail, telling stories about important people. And then we go further, a thousand years ago, telling about important events around the world. And you can notice as you go further, the humans start to look more human. They don't look less cartoon, which is a lot like in those video games. So you get Rembrandt there painting the portrait. And then here we are at the pinnacle, where you have Jacques-Louis David's painting of, of Napoleon, which is in photorealistic detail. And then the realists, like Thomas Eakins, who painted this one of an operating theater, who wanted you to get the feeling of what it was actually like. So art didn't end at photorealism. It went further. So now you move into Impressionism, Expressionism, Cubism, where we're taking apart reality and saying, you know, the photorealism is not, the, is not what I was actually going for. I need more emotion. And then in the early 1900s, it gets even crazier. We have surrealism, where and abstract expressionism and minimalism and then color field painting, which is going even more simplified, right? We're almost going all the way back to the pixel. So, be, and the reason for that was because we want to find the emotion and be connected to the to reality. That is reality, the emotion. This is a cool picture of Rothko's chapel with Pong in the middle, right? 1971 was Rothko's chapel and Pong was invented in 1972. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. So the whole concept here is, is that we go from the primitive and we move to the advanced, or we go from simple to complex. This is part of the cycle. And if, the, if you look at them all together, they kind of match up. Now, if we're at this reality right now, where, we're, where this Oculus Rift is, where are we going? So there's a picture of me that's done with Instagram that was really like an impressionistic version of myself, right? So we're moving along this continuum. So what I ask you is the future of virtual reality. It's not going to be this. It's going to be some weird place where I'm a two-dimensional shape interacting with other two-dimensional shapes. or I don't know. So let's talk about that later.